Hi, welcome back to Burning River Bushcraft. Today we're going to be attaching a set of tubular bands to a natural fork slingshot using the ball and tube method. So I was just getting ready to mount a tubular set of bands to this natural fork and I thought I'd take a minute and shoot that on video. So I'm going to be using the ball and the tube method. There's several different methods to attach this, but for this one we have to have holes in the frame. Now there's some commercial frames that actually have holes already in them. Uh, the Scout model does from Simple Shot. Uh, this one, I believe that's like a 3 8 hole. So when you are deciding to do this, you have to have uh, thick enough forks in your frame that you can thin it down approximately the size of the hole and you've still got enough strength. So to get the hole in here in the field, uh, you could use an awl. You could carry a hand auger bit with you. Uh, this was just drilled straight through. The key point of this is it doesn't have to be exact diameter of the tube. You can be a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, you've got a little bit to play with. But you also have to have a smooth camfered end on both sides. So you're going to have to take your knife, uh, deburr, you know, knock the edge off both sides of the holes, front and rear, because the rubber is going to be in contact with these holes on both sides. So tubular bands have a memory to them because this was on a roll at one point in its life, it's going to remember that and it's going to naturally want to have a droop to it. So you want to hang that so that your pouch doesn't have a twist. You don't want to have one band tied on like this and one band tied on like that. You see how I've got a natural twist in the pouch when I do it that way. So this is critical when you're tying your pouches on to make sure that the rubber lays nice and smooth. Both bands are attempting to go in the same direction and it'll give you a nice steady uh, pouch. So the hole and the outside diameter of the tubing should be approximately the same. So it's kind of difficult to get it through there at times. There is a trick to this. You need to first establish uh, how you're going to hold the slingshot frame. So this is going to be the target side. Uh, this is going to be the side facing me. So from the target side of the slingshot, I've just got a little bit of cordage here, and I'm going to push a loop through. So I've got a loop through the hole, and I'm going to go ahead and just stick a little bit of the tubing through that loop, and then pull it right through. Just like that. All right, we're halfway there. So we've got both tubes through, and you see we're a twisted mess down here on the pouch. So at this point, we can rotate this we can spin this tube around and orientate the pouches the way we want them. There we go. So we're not worried about the length here yet. I'm just trying to get the twist out and get the tubes where they're going to lay in a natural position. So we can see the problem here. Without anything in the tubes, they will just pull right through. This is kind of nice because this gives you an adjustable draw. Uh, you want a little deeper, deeper draw, you can slide the tube out and attach it a little shorter. You can draw it in for a little more power. And as you, the, the bands actually wear, you can slide in and out so you're wearing a different edge of the rubber. So as this starts to wear a little bit, you can increase the life by changing the draw length slightly. So here's one of the tricky parts of this. We're trying to get a 7 16 steel ball into a quarter inch ID rubber tube. So to do that we're going to lubricate this with rubbing alcohol. Alright, so this is just simple rubbing alcohol. If you didn't have this in the field, a uh, spit would work also. This is just a whole lot less gross. So with the 
with the lubricated rubber tube, I'm able now to push the ball bearing into the tube pretty easy. Now that it's in there, I can pinch it back to give myself a little more power, trim off the excess. I can work this also forward to give myself a little deeper draw. And like I said before, as this starts to wear, you can see it and you can uh, get a little more shooting out of this rubber by just adjusting the ball forward and back slightly to give yourself a new wear area. So once again, this has been dipped in the rubbing alcohol 716 steel bearing and it just pushes straight down and in. So at this point you can go ahead and seat the ball bearings. Uh, you can make sure there's no twist in the pouch, make sure the rubber's hanging approximately right, and in this case you can tell by the tails that it's not quite lined up right. So in that case you are going to just fold your pouch in half, find the center point, and then that's going to help you level up the bands. So now anytime you've got alcohol in rubber like this, you're always better off to let it dry before you take it out and shoot it. However, with this ball in the tube method, it seems to me like they bite in pretty well. I've never had one slip. But for safety's sake, you want to give yourself an inch to three quarters of an inch of tail. You never want to cut your rubber where it's right on the edge of the bearing. You want full grip of at least a half inch. An inch is a whole lot better. All right, so this has been the ball and tube method of attaching tubular bands to a slingshot. This is one of my favorite methods because it allows you to easily change bands and change the draw uh, either for length for power or just as the bands wear I can slip this in and out. Uh, the negative to this is if you were trying to manufacture a frame in the woods with limited gear, uh, this is a little difficult to do with an awl. And again, this has to be a nice clean surface, so you also have to spend quite a bit of time camfering it with your knife. It is doable, but on a frame that you're going to build at home and then carry into the woods with you, I just as soon use the ball and tube method as anything else. This has been Jamie Boggs with Burning River Bushcraft. See you next time.